guys, my name's Josh and in today's video we're going to be downloading and installing Microsoft Windows Security Essentials. Security Essentials is a piece of software that allows you to protect your computer from viruses, spyware and other pieces of malicious content that could potentially harm your computer and cause it to fail in some way. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up our web browser, go to Google and type in Microsoft oops, Microsoft Security Essentials. Click this first link that you see. This is the page that you'll see once you've clicked. And this is your download page. So you want to select your version. I'm running Windows 7 64 bit. Some of you might be 32 bit. So you need to find out what that is first. So click Windows 7 64 bit. And then click download. As you can see it's a very small file and it downloads extremely fast so it shouldn't take too long for you to download. So once it's finished downloading, you just want to click it. You want to click yes when prompted. As you can see it just extracted the files then. And this is as installer. From here this will be where the installation starts. So, so this is just a bit of a writing about the security essentials and stuff like that. So I want to click next. Terms and conditions about using the software you should read them because obviously you're, if you're by using the software you're agreeing to abide by those terms so you want to click I accept this is optional the join the customer experience improvement program what this basically does is when you're, you've got your computer on it will anonymously collect data from your computer about usage um, crash reports things like that just so they can make the program better so I always join it because it doesn't take up any of the processing power of your computer so and it doesn't get used that often it's just so they can improve the program so if they can improve the program and make it better for me then why not so I'll click next so this is about your security if sometimes if your Windows firewall is turned off it's asking if you if they want to turn it on obviously this is a recommended option if you're trying to secure your computer so I'm going to leave that ticked so click next so as you can see it's ready to install now so we're going to click next or should I say install so it's a relatively small install so it shouldn't take too long so as you can see if you watch the status it'll tell you what it's installing as you can see that was extremely fast you didn't really see any sort of loading bar so you can see there's a scan my computer option now so I'll leave that ticked you should always scan your computer for the first time when you've got software installed so I'm going to click finish as you can see this is the screen that you'll see as it opens up what you'll see when you open it in, in future so you see at the top it says PC status is at risk and this is because it hasn't been scanned or been updated yet and that's what it's doing now it's updating its virus databases as you can see it's now changed to protected which is a good thing. So once that's protected, you know that it's got the latest updates for about all the viruses and stuff that are out there. As I left it before, it was set to do a scan when it started, so it's doing that quick scan now. So in the interest of time, I'm just going to cancel that for now. But normally you'd leave that to run, depending on how much you have on your hard drive. It can take a while, but if you've not relatively got not a lot, then that's not going to take too long, so I'll we'll cancel for now. So you see, this is the screen that we've got, the home screen. You see, real time protection. What real time protection is, is it means that it's working at the same time as the computer's on. So you should really look for antivirus software and stuff like that's running in real time. It does use up a bit of your performance, but not a great deal. Virus and spyware definitions. This is um, what contains all like the latest details about the newest viruses, how to prevent them, how to stop them. So you always want to make sure that's up to date. So as you can see here we've got some scan options. Quick, full and custom. If you hover over them they give you a bit of a bit of a details about them. So the quick one's nice if you just want to have a quick scan just to make sure everything's running fine. If you think that there's something wrong with your system on the other hand you always choose full which is nice, it does scan the whole system and can take a while but if you do believe your system's compromised then it's probably the best option to pick. Custom, 
usually with custom that you can choose which particular files you want to scan so if you've just downloaded a particular piece of software then it's good just to scan that the folder that it came in so it's always good so if we click this tab here called update as you can see this is update page fairly simple if you click update it'll search the web servers to see if there's any updates so as you can see mine's up to date should always be up to date history in here you can choose what you want to see allowed items all detected items and quarantine items this will show you if there's been anything on your computer that is found that's potentially harmful and some that they deem that shouldn't be there so sometimes with some programs it might mistake it but so you should always read what the detected item would be if you downloaded something it might pop up on there for you so as you can see we've got this tab here click settings and we've got a bundle of settings we can go through here and scheduled scan we can run a scheduled scan so I'm going to set mine to Wednesday at I don't know let's say 4 o'clock in the afternoon so I'm going to keep make sure this is still checked so before the scan starts it'll check for updates my latest virus and spyware definitions so we can start the schedule scan only when my PC is on but not in use which is good if you're trying to do some heavy processing such as gaming and um, video editing stuff like that that's going to take up a lot of your processing power so you can limit the CPU usage um, if you limit the CPU usage um, to a, a lower amount so 10% say it's going to take longer because it's not using as many resources but it is handy if you're doing something at the time so it's always worth bearing in mind what you might be doing on that particular day so we're just going to leave it at 50% so I click save changes and when you're prompted click yes so you've got all these default actions of what will happen when the, it finds something so if it finds a severe alert level you can do the recommended action you can remove it or you can quarantine it so I recommend if you're not an advanced user and you're not very experienced with it, you leave these all alone because then it works the way it should already without having to set too much up. Real time protection, a little bit of a description about what uh, real time is. So you should always really keep that on because you don't want to download something and then find out later that it's bad for your computer. So you can exclude files and locations here. So you can choose to exclude, say, I've got a backup drive. So I could exclude that because I know it's safe and there's nothing on it. So there's some processes. This is mainly for more advanced users. So those that aren't too advanced or not too careful and stuff like that. It should really be left alone unless you really do know what you're doing. Advanced. So these are just a, a few things you can pick. So you can scan removable drives such as your flash drive, uh, an external hard drive that you might have running so and a couple of other options that you can look at so allow users to full view the full history results so maybe you want to only just allow yourself so but this, this is down to user preference really so you got maps which is a microsoft activation protection service uh, this reports to microsoft about potential unwanted software you can choose to join it you don't have to but it, not, it sets you as basic membership off off the bat so you can leave that as it is a lot of this stuff you can leave really from default actions down schedule scan is going to be the one that you're using if you know when you'd like it to be scanned so you can choose which kind of scan quick scan full scan so yeah now that this is running I should be able to see it down there PC status is protected so if I double click that it'll bring it back up and it'll bring the window back up and that'll run on startup as well when you start your computer we don't have to worry about loading it or anything like that so it makes life easy you can just turn on your computer and carry on as you normally do so right guys hope you enjoyed the video and hope you found it very useful and i'll see you again next time thanks